Okay, let us prove it now. So this is the achievability of channel capacity. So that is nothing but to find a radar smaller than the capacity, then there exists a code book. So the sketch of ideas Shannon has used is uh, to allow arbitrarily uh, small error probability, but it is non-zero, but it is, if it is uh, small enough, that it doesn't matter. And so that we can use the uh, law of large numbers. Uh, so as we use a channel uh, repeatedly, n times, we can talk about n channel uses collectively, uh, and uh, we send a vector of inputs at the uh, channel, uh, I mean, at the transmitter interfacing the channel, and uh, uh, symbols are received at the output of the channel, then we can make a, a decision on the received vector. This uh, vector uh, uh, processing uh, gives uh, the uh, surface hardening uh, effect so that we can have a convergence in probabilities and the entropy, uh, sample entropy con con converges to the true entropy. And then we can use the asymptotic EP partition property and then so on and so on. So uh, if we uh, 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 say this uh, very uh, uh, succinct manner, that is basically utilizing the weak law of large number. So we can use the weak, in order to use the weak law of large numbers, we need to allow small probability, but not non-zero. And then we have to use the channel many, many times. So the size of the code word has to be uh, long enough to have uh, you know small probability of error, uh, and then um, that's going to be it. And um, that is about the uh, utilizing weak law of large numbers. And the other part, which is also very very clever, is uh, this one. The Shannon uses average performance of all possible code books rather than, uh, uh, rather than that of a single code book. You have uh, in our previous homework, let's say homework set number five, I have asked uh, you to calculate the um, probability of error, exact one, uh, for the uh, seven for Hamming code. You know how difficult that was, right? But imagine what happens when we increase the block length n. And uh, uh, when we don't have a nice structure like he uh, Hamming code, you have seen the Hamming code has a nice geometric inter interpretation. That's, uh, that is nothing but the each code word is located at the center of, of a single radius, uh, 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 seeming, a single uh, hemming, I mean, hemming radio with the uh, uh, distance one. So each one uh, is uh, the center, each code word is the center of a hemming distance one. Uh, I mean, each code word is uh, at the center of a Hemming sphere with radius one, right? And there is no other uh, word uh, that does not belong to uh, a Hemming sphere, right? So, so it is relatively easy to calculate because the decision region uh, for the decoder are identical for each code word. So, uh, you know, calculating the uh, probable error performance 
of the code book was relatively easy for seven for Hemming code. Seven is not very long, uh, and the decision region are identical. So the, uh, um, even though we have these nice properties, it was still very difficult to calculate the probability of error exactly. So uh, what Shannon has done um, is to use average performance of code books rather than that of a single code book. So code book is going to be a random variable for a Shannon. Then all he has to do is average over the random distribution um, of, of the code. So uh, that will simplify the analysis of a probability of error uh, very much. So that um, the channel capacity theorem can be proved, okay? And the uh, sketch of a proof is a random code selection. Instead of a fixed code book, uh, uh, he will use random code books, okay? And calculate the average performance uh, uh, of the uh, random code books, okay? And the decode by joint typicality, typicality. Uh, basically, we will look for a code word that is jointly typical with the received word. So that is the decoder. Uh, in uh, seven for Hemming code case, we were using maximum likelihood decoder, which is optimal, but it is very difficult to prove, right? Using that optimal decision uh, classifier, okay? But if we use joint typicality, it's easy to prove. So here, the uh, objective is achievability. So we, we just need to show uh, there exists a uh, uh, code book which achieves probability of error vanishingly small as we increase the uh, block length. Okay, so here is the formal statement uh, of the Shannon. All weights below capacity C are achievable. Specifically, for rates smaller than C, there exists a sequence of codes whose size is 2 to the power of nr, uh, block length is n, with the maximum probability of error or average probability of error converges to zero as n increases. And uh, this is the forward part of the channel capacity theorem, uh, channel coding theorem, sorry, channel coding theorem. And the uh, converse uh, is this. So any sequence of two to the power of nr n codes with the uh, probability of error converges to zero, that code must have a rate uh, smaller than c. So that's the channel coding theorem of Shannon. So here is the forward proof. Rate R is smaller than C, then uh, code has a smaller error, very small error. So that's the part, forward part, okay? R is less than C, code has a small probability of error, vanishing as N increases. So here we have in uh, the input uh, uh, symbol x, the distribution px uh, fixed. So px is fixed, okay? And then later on, we will optimize px as we have done in the channel capacity proof, right? So calculate a code at random, I mean, generate a code at random uh, according to this fixed distribution, okay? Select uh, M code words randomly. So since you have a distribution, you code, you select this code word randomly. So first code word right here, 
second code word in the second row, third code word in the third row, all the way up to empty row. So empty row, you have length and vector uh, randomly selected from this distribution. So all these selections are independently done. Okay, so each one of these uh, symbols in this matrix is a select, selected independently and identically using PX. All right, so what is the size of this matrix C? The size of this matrix C uh, is the, uh, 2 to the power of nr by n. So this is the number of columns. This here is number of rows. So that's the size of this matrix. This matrix is a uh, code book. So each one is uh, selected from this, this uh, distribution px, each one independently, identically. So IID selection of axis here. So how many random variables selection you have to do? 2 to the power of nr times n, this many random variable selections you have to do. So the product uh, of uh, the distribution is the distribution of the code book. So code book selection is uh, a random variable following this distribution. So code book is random. So when we have a capital letter, this is a, a random variable. When we have a small letter, that is a selection is made. So this code is a, a, a a uh, fixed, uh, you know, selected uh, code book. Okay. Right. Okay. So C is a uh, random variable or random matrix of size two to the power of n r by n, and. Uh, in the proof, we will use random code book. So this is a random variable, it will remain. And that will uh, simplify the um, calculation of probability of error. So all the elements in the matrix are selected IID from PX. The use of this code C is known to both transmitter and the receiver. So once this is selected, then this code book is going to be shared between the transmitter and receiver. So at the transmitter, one of the code word is selected. Um, uh, one of the message is select, uh, message index is selected. According to that message, you select a code word and you send a uh, code word over the channel, then you will receive YN, using YN, you made a decision uh, to uh, transmit it index, okay? So, and the P, Y given X is known to both transmitter and receiver, and a message index is chosen uniformly among this and sent over the chain. So here is the block diagram. Uh, w the code word X and W, the small letter. Uh, so this is actual code word, not a random vector. W to row of C is a sent. So in this particular case, there are uh, 16 party possible words. And then among them, I have only four, one, two, three, four vectors selected as a code word. So there are, um, in this case, two to the, oh, sorry. 
2 to the power of 4 words possible. And uh, among them, 4 are uh, selected as code word. And uh, so in this case, the message index set is 1, 2, 3, 4. And then one of them selected. And um, for example, if one was selected, you send this over the channel. And um, this uh, has a certain alphabet from X. So this is a vector of um, a length N. This is vector of length N, right? So you can say X1, X2, all the way up to Xn. That represented this one, right? And uh, here I use four, so maybe I use x uh, one is uh, from this one right here, or x one can be from this one right here. So you select them and send. Use the channel n times. You receive it and you made a decision. So when we do this probability of error, we have to calculate, then we need to know the distance properties, right, of each code word, right? So you send to this one and then because of the channel, you will have received these neighborhood of um, uh, the, the first code word, right? And then when you send this one, you will receive uh, these neighborhood of the second code word and the third and fourth. So we have a decision boundaries. And then if we want to calculate the probability of error exactly, we need to know this geometric relationship with each other and then the probability of error calculation is going to be very, very complex. As you have seen in uh, the Hamming code case. All right, so anyway, anyway, that's the structure that you have uh, for the probability of error. So the receiver receives YN according to the distribution. And uh, this is the encoding operation and uh, so on. But what happens if you use uh, a random code book? So you select this four code word, right? Randomly. So next time, the this is for code book number one. Another code book is made of these four points. Right, so you you have a different uh, possible code book selection, so that works as a random uh, variable. Okay, all right, block diagram. So let's go one by one. I don't have to do everything in a single page. So the typical optimal receiver is maximal likelihood of decoder, but here we will use a typical set decoding um, because this is easy uh, for a proof and the joint typical decoding rule. So the, the, the receiver decides W prime, which is equal to Q on in index, in the index set. So if X and Q and Y and Q is jointly typical, and no other code word is jointly typical with YN, then I can uniquely determine that Q uh, is the index that was sent, okay? That decision might be wrong, right? But uh, probability of such event uh, is vanishingly small as N increases. So that's the structure of the proof. So this error event is a decoding error event that this decision Q is uh, not the true uh, index that was sent, right? Uh, but this probability uh, of error event uh, 
it goes uh, to zero as n, n increases. So the probability of error, uh, lambda i, is the i-th message sent and the decision error. Uh, that's uh, that, and the maximum probability of error and the average probability, right? That's what we are going to use. So, um, Here, we will consider a probability of error for a particular word W of a particular code C. It is difficult to calculate uh, uh, lambda WC because code word in C are chosen random. So uh, for example of this one, I say code one, code two, code three, uh, for each code, uh, you have to find um, uh, lambda one, lambda two, lambda three, lambda four. So you send this code word and what is the probability of error? You send this code word, what is the probability of error? And so on and so on. And then you have to do the average. So you need to know the distances between these code words. You need to know the geometric structure of the code. So but uh, it, it could be done in a, a simple, small code, but if we uh, increase n very large, then the space is uh, uh, you know, unimaginably large. So it is very difficult to uh, find the probability of error uh, exactly. So this is code two and code three and so on. And uh, there are so many code books, right? So this is code book number one, code book number two, code book number three. How many uh, such uh, uh, code books uh, are pos possible? And then we have to find each and every one of them, and then we have to take the average. Okay, so in this particular case, uh, let's say there are uh, two to the power of uh, four words possible. We are selecting two to the power of two, four code words, right, in a code book, then the number of possible distinct code books is two to the power of four, choose two to the power of two. This is very big, right, as we increase n. So if we have a two to the power of uh, n words, and uh, we choose only this many uh, code words, and uh, when n is equal to 10, then this becomes 1024. When we select r is equal to half, then this is uh, 2 to the power of 5, so 1024 to uh, 32. Yeah, this is going to be huge. This is the uh, total number of uh, code books, right? Number of code books that are distinct, right? This many the number of code books. This is huge. And then for each code book, you have 32 code words. You have to figure out the distance between each code word and then find out the probability of error, and then you have to take the average over this many code books. Okay. So that's the difficulty involving uh, doing it exactly. So uh, we have to use random code book, and uh, uh, we will entertain why uh, random code book uh, configuration uh, is uh, making the uh, analysis easier, okay? But if we, first, first, first one is, if we do the random uh, code book and average, if, uh, find the average performance over the code book, uh, it, uh, it, you, you may notice this property first. So we have to uh, select a code, and then among that code, 
you sent I to code word and the center uh, I to code word sent and calculate the probability of error. And we do the same, right? Uh, we select code book randomly and the average of the whole code book. And then this one says, what is the probability of error uh, with respect to trade code word sent? Okay, so for example, here, uh, when I is equal to one, J is equal to two, uh, 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 is equal to four, something like that, one for this one, and J is four for this one. And uh, as you can see, if we select the code book randomly, anyhow, the index here doesn't matter, right? Because uh, in this location, it is one, and in this uh, uh, in code book number one, it is first code word is this one, and then in code book number three, uh, the this is code word number four, right? And then in, in code book number two, these locations are the same, but the index could be could have been switched, right? So it doesn't matter about the index anymore. So we can use this uh, uh, property and uh, uh, distinguishing uh, between uh, I and J within the index set doesn't matter. They are all the same, okay? So that's the first thing that we notice. So we let's consider uh, probability of error, probability of error averaged over the whole code book, right? So um, code book selection and then average over all code book, probability of error for a particular code book, for a particular code book, there are N messages, uh, each one selected uh, equally probably and uh, this is the probability of error of sending w index w right message index w and uh, this performance uh, uh, dependent upon the structure of the code book so you need to know the code book c right uh, at this point it is selected right so that's the probability of error. You have to do this, okay? But um, we can, since they are finite summation, we can move this summation outside, right here, and then we can talk about this. But in previous page, we learned that indexing doesn't matter if we do uh, average over the code book. So we'll just choose the first code word, okay? And uh, since this is, uh, I mean, since this is the same thing, so you, you do M, same uh, additions, and then since you divide it by one over M, so you can cancel these. So all you have left is this, this part. So this part is, uh, is what you need to consider. So random code book selection, add them all over all code book. And then first word, transmission is the only part that you need to worry about. So this one says, you will select the code book randomly, okay? And then what you need to worry about is uh, first code word. And then um, probability of error uh, for the first code word sent, okay? So every code word is selected randomly. And um, we just need to worry about one code word selection in order to find out the probability of error um, of uh, average of uh, all code book selections and all code word selections, okay? So given the first message sent, find the error probability. That's the message that we need to follow. So in picture, it 
uh, it goes like that. So you don't have to worry about any other indices. So first index. So you select in, in a possible space of a, a symbol X, uh, XM. So this is the uh, total number of words that are possible in the uh, space of XM to pictorially depict that. And you select these code words randomly. Suppose that you selected this one randomly, the red marked one. And later on, you will select the second, third, and fourth. But you will do it later because this is a, uh, you just need to follow this distribution, right? Just need to find, follow this distribution to select X2, X3, X4, right? So the order doesn't matter. So first you, okay, first you select and you send this over the channel, you receive it. Uh, received, uh, receive uh, the code word over the channel, but because the channel is noisy, you obtain YN, but this YN is with respect to sending this uh, code word. So they are jointly typical, right? And then you make a decision on the index using YN1. So as you can see, these two are jointly typical. And then the probability that they are not jointly typical is a small, okay, and, and so on. But the problem is the other parts, right? If you selected the other code words that are very close to the first code word, then the decoder jointly typical decoder will be confused, right? It might be jointly, jointly typical with the second code word or third code word or fourth code word, right? Uh, in the calculation of these events, right? You select these vectors based, uh, based only on this one, right? Uh, but not related uh, to, um, this guy right here. This guy and this guy are jointly typical, but this guy, YN1 and uh, X2, like, uh, you know, let's say XN2, which is this one, or three, which is this one, or this one, they are not jointly typical with YN1, right? Because YN1 is the vector received by sending XN1 over the channel. Okay, so that's the key idea. So you select this one, send it, receive it, made a decision. After you made a decision, you select second word, second code word, third code word, and fourth code word, right? Since these are not jointly typical with Y and one, the probability of uh, letting, uh, making a mistake from confusion from two or three or four are going to be upper bounded by the measure that we have written, which is this one. Right? That's the key idea, okay? All right, so let's move on. So if we do that, then we, we can define the event, the error event, error event that I decode the word YN jointly is, I mean, so I decode the word is jointly typical with the YN is EI. So I can be defined for one, two, and all the way up to N. So I, the code word is jointly typical with the YN if this occurs, right? 
So um, going back to this question, the probability of error, decoding error is uh, either code word. So first code word sent and you received it. And these two are not jointly to be called, right? That's uh, E1 complement. And E2 is second code word is jointly typical with YN, where YN is the received word uh, by sending uh, uh, X N1 uh, over the channel. So that's E2, E3, and EN. So it's a union. So either X, X1 is not jointly typical with YN, or well, uh, second uh, code word is jointly typical with YN, or third code word is jointly typical with YN, and so on and so on. So uh, obviously, these events uh, could be uh, you know, related with each other. We could have some overlaps, so they are not. Uh, mutually exclusive events. So that means that second code word selection might uh, be jointly typical with YN. Uh, and the third code word selection might be jointly typical with uh, YN. So uh, if uh, these code word selections are close with each other, it will be uh, uh, very confused, uh, confusing to uh, discern which one was more close to the uh, YN, right? So uh, at least uh, these pairs have, have some uh, common elements, right? So that's the probability of error by sending first code word, selected and sent. So using the union bound, right? We just uh, take the summation of probability of each event. So this upper bound goes this way. So first one is probability of E1C, C means complement, plus probability of E2, plus probability of E3, and so on. So we take the summation of PEI, I running from 2T, 2 to the M, okay? And, uh, um, we note as n goes to infinity, probability of E1C goes to zero, probability of EIs, each one of them goes to uh, this, I mean, upper bounded by this number right here, two to the power of n mutual information, okay? But since we have m minus one of them, so this is going to be upper bounded by epsilon plus m minus one times the common term, which is this one, two to the minus n mutual information minus three times epsilon for n sufficiently large. This is the result that we obtained in previous page. Right? So we use it right here. So, here is the last page. So probability of error is upper bounded by m minus one times uh, this term, the probability upper bound. And uh, m is two to the power of nr and take away minus one. But let's not worry too much about this one because this is huge and this is one. So we just take the upper bound and uh, utilizing only this and that, you get two to the power of minus n mutual information. This one goes inside this parenthesis and becomes minus r minus three epsilon. Okay, so this one uh, converges uh, to zero, this term converges to zero, as long as this uh, exponent is uh, the, the parenthesis, what's inside the parenthesis remain positive, right? Then this becomes negative exponent. As n goes to infinity, 
then this will converge to converges uh, to zero. So as long as this exponent the inside the parentheses remains positive, the magic happens. Okay, so as long as this is satisfied, the magic happens, then this converges to zero. So we can certainly say epsilon, or we can say uh, two epsilon, okay, as well, okay. Right, but I will use two epsilon because of, um, I'm using uh, in the next uh, page two epsilons. Okay, so that happens when R is smaller than mutual information minus small uh, epsilon. Right, so basically when R is smaller than C, that's what I'm getting at. Right, so for n sufficiently large, P can be made very small. Okay, so that's basically it for the proof, right? So we can use two epsilon uh, just to be consistent with the next page. Then now we can choose px to be the optimal p uh, star x that maximizes the mutual information. Then the condition becomes r less than c. All right, and uh, basically, since the probability of error averaged over all quarter books is smaller than, uh, is very small, then there exists at least one quarter book C star with a small probability of error, PE C star, because this is about average quarter books, right? Or all possible quarter book randomly selected, then there exists at least one quarter book with a good performance. Okay, such a code can be found by an exhaustive search, but this exhaustive search is impossible, right? Because the um, number of possible code, code B is so large. So Shannon's proof is existence proof, right? It's not the constructive proof, right? Um, the theorem says there exists a code, but doesn't say how to construct such a code, right? You, you, you can construct a such a code uh, using random selection, right? Uh, you can uh, select a code book C just using uh, distribution Px. Each element is selected independently. And uh, it, once you find a code book C, then uh, that uh, randomly selected code book uh, you know, as long as uh, less red is smaller than C, it will work very well, right? The probability of error is going to be small. That's what it says. And uh, basically these are the arguments to make it uh, uh, work for a maximal uh, probability of error. Okay, but this is um, easy part. We can take a look at it, okay? All right, so basically if I explain quickly, basically you can throw the worst half uh, code word in a code book, then you can make this one. And if you have that one satisfied, then you can have this. So this is the not, uh, you know, uh, immediately easy to see. So let's take an example. For example, let's say you have a, relation goes like this and let's say you have a, a six code word right and uh, average performance is add them all and then this is the number of code word right that is smaller than two epsilon then the, here, if you find, uh, throw, away, throw away the worst half code words. So you throw away these, these uh, you know, part where you have a large probability of error. So throw away these guys, right? That is our aim. Then what is left 
is three folder uh, words, right? So this will be uh, code word. So we move this to the other side. So move this to the other side. We multiply this with the M, right? M is a six, right? In this particular case, so six, right? So move this other side. And then this is, this part is two epsilon times two times three, okay? So if we throw away this, uh, you know, uh, large probability error code words, and uh, since I have this one even smaller than addition of all six, so this is still an upper bound. So two epsilon, two times three. Okay, and move this one to the other side now. So divide by three, so we move it. So this one here is uh, upper bounded by four times epsilon. So that's what I have here, right? right here. So um, in this case, um, basically um, the, uh, this one, uh, the worst uh, lambda four uh, is, uh, uh, you know, less than or equal to four epsilon uh, can be explained, okay? So that's the uh, achievability part. And then we're moving on, does we have constructed a code R prime, which is R minus one over N with a maximum prob probability of error lambda less than four epsilon. So it is a QED, but uh, you can ignore this uh, last part because we can just uh, say that without uh, maximum probability of error, we can just say the prob uh, average probability of error converges to zero. So if average probability converges to zero, certainly maximum probability of error converges to zero as well. So that's the end of the for the proof, okay? And uh, people have believed that this random coding method was only for proof. No practical guidance as a coding method, uh, you know, uh, because uh, you know, no pro practical guidance was given as a coding method. So people have worked you know, frantically to search for a method to find uh, you know, a, code, a code book or a code book design uh, so that the probability of error approaches zero as uh, block length increases. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so lo uh, lots of researches has been done in that regard. And uh, later on, uh, Turbo code was found in 1993, which has shown the, to approach the capacity very closely. And another one was found later uh, in the uh, 1996, um, uh, which is called the low density parity check code. Uh, that was actually invented in 1962, uh, but uh, forgotten uh, because back in 1962, uh, there were no fast enough computers uh, to simulate the performance of this code uh, because magic, the magic happens when n increase to infinity. So n has to be very large, but uh, when n is very large, the computer has to work uh, and it has, uh, you know, has to support the uh, uh, simulation, uh, the amount of simulation that it has, it has to be able to perform. So they were not able to test this code out in 1960s and 
soon this code has gotten forgotten uh, has uh, forgotten but uh, with the invention of this code this code is uh, uh, the length of this code is approaching very uh, huge a large number like uh, more than a billion the magic happens and uh, people realize that there was such code called the low density operative check code, which has a similar decoding algorithm that Turbo code used and shown to approach this um, uh, capacity. And then they applied, uh, I mean, they uh, uh, re-study this uh, code and uh, implement this code in coding and decoding operations inside the computer. And uh, they were, finally able to try out very long code, very long LDPC code. And then they were able to show that this code is actually, is very good and approaches, uh, approaches the capacity or even some channel, it achieves the capacity as well. So these are the uh, invention uh, made available with the advance of computers, right? since uh, computers became faster and faster uh, very complex uh, encoding and decoding operation can be uh, you know supported in simulations and they were able to show that uh, this constructive uh, method you know with this method actually you know how to design the code how to do the decoding or decoding algorithms are given and uh, you know encoding algorithms are given and how to construct a code book is given so um, all these things are given so that you can build uh, this code and uh, you know uh, uh, sil uh, sil silicon circuits as well and uh, the common parts of these codes are they are long block codes with a built-in random compound so basically you uh, you have the random coding argument still working in these uh, in the construction of these codes. So you know, uh, I have taught these uh, codes in the past uh, in my channel coding theory course. Uh, probably I'll be able to uh, teach in channel coding theory in uh, uh in the near future and then uh, in, in that course we will be able to uh, uh, study how to design these codes and other codes other uh, modern codes that are uh, capacity approaching okay so that's the end of the for the proof i will talk about uh, back order proof later on.